Shalom, Israel 8. Shalom, uh, Israelite family. Shalom, Israelite family. Uh, welcome to another episode of Israel in Asia. Uh, welcome to another episode of Israel in Asia. Uh, one of my last videos I just did uh, covered down on the longest slave trade in Macau. Uh, Macau in China actually had the longest slave trade, longer than the Atlantic slave trade. Uh, there were slave trades going on well before they started trading people from, from exactly at, well, West Africa. So if you go look at that video, you will start seeing that there was a trade well back in the 13th, uh, 8th century. So during the 8th century, you had people coming from Macau being sold into different countries. So during that time period, there was the Tang Dynasty and there was the Shila Dynasty. Tang Dynasty is with, is a.k.a. China. Shila Dynasty is a.k.a. Korea. Now, Korea had multiple dynasties and multiple sectors. But be, realize that there was a huge battle between the Shila um, dynasty and Korea and, and the Tang dynasty fighting and creating alliances as well as trying to uh, first they were fighting with each other and they created alliance and then they then they betrayed each other. But in those battles, we want to identify who was fighting each other, who were in those bomb in those in, um, in those locations. So since this is called Israel in Asia, was the Israelites in the Tang dynasty? was the Israelites in the Shila dynasty. I'm not saying that all Tang people in the Tang dynasty was Israel, and I'm not saying all people in the Shila dynasty was Israel. But let's see, was Israel even there? So let's look at this book here. These are two books. One book is focused on the people that were in Japan and the people that were in China as well as other areas in Asia. Now, we just mentioned earlier, we was talking, we said Korea and China. So why are we talking about Japan? Well, let me explain. Let's read the book first. It says the first foreign race who, uh, who, uh, um, who overran the Korean, they themselves called the Diku. But of the origin of the people, the Koreans could give no account. They couldn't realize, identify who they really were, right? Or who were and where they sprung from can only in present be the matter of uh, supposition. And probably being that after the death of Alexander the Great, Alexander the Great and Apocrypha, some of the, his generals who divided the empires among themselves, per, um, um, penetrated with their veterans into Korea. Okay, so now we're talking about Korea. And quietly settled there, or settled down. Among other trophies, came took in, taken by the prince uh, and troops who accompanied and formed part of the uh, Tycho Siemens expedi uh, expedition to the Koreans was the prince helmet. Pure ancient Grecian shape, made of steel, beautifully inlaid with the with the five claws Korean dragon of in gold. The helmet came into the possessions of a few years among with ancient armorer of the Assyrians in 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 uh, Medes. So the uh, the Medes and Assyrians. The next race they mention were the uh, Kaishi who introduced the learning of the eastern of the east among the emperors of China whom they conquered who overcame the Dokin, the the Dinkus and the aborigines or Ab aborigines yes and made them pay an annual tribute to China this Kishi race were of the Shemitic or Jewish race or Jews, that's what you say, the Semitic or Jewish race, they introduced their belongings and from China, including the Chinese characters into the Koreans and five clawed um, dragons, then became the royal armor or royal arms of Korea. So this book is about Japan, but they're talking about the, the uh, Kaishi race. So remember that word, Kaishi race. So we're talking about Kaishi race and we're talking about Korea when they mention the people that was in Korea during this time. Now let's go over to this book. Now this book you've seen in other videos, but let's cover just a small segment. 
The other book, like I said, the other video I, I got covered on this was talking about the Macau slave trade. So in Macau, there was a city called Canaan. Canaan, you had the Cannonese. You had the Kung Lung, you had the Kung Lung tribes, which were African tribes. We're gonna cover that later on. But in this box right here, it says Canaan did not seem aware of their existence, nor uh, collections of their traditions has been made. Benjamin II heard there were Jews in the neighborhood, but records uh, were uh, records no acquisition with them. Acquaintance, I'm sorry. No acquaintance with them. He was told that there was a tribe beyond the Hungang Ho called Hawaii, counting as Jews, and that a, a carnival caravan came from them to Canon every two to three years. Oh, that sounds every two to three years. Mm, that's a little sounds for me like a scripture right there, but I'm not gonna go into that for today. Uh, with spices, dyes, teas, and col um, colonial goods. So, were Jews there? Absolutely. Now, the thing is, we want to make sure that everybody's reading these pages. I'm not going to read the entire page. I just want to cover some specific details to make sure to see, hey, during this time period, during early, the early, to what, let me say five, to 800 or five to eight um, century were there Israelites in Korea and were there Israelites in China according to these books yes Israelites were in Korea according to this book yes Israelites were in China and Japan if you read below at the bottom of the page Israelites were there early 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 centuries you even got Malabar here, which was shared in my last my last video. And that's in that's in Asia. I mean, that's in India. So was Israelites here during the Tang and Shila dynasty? Absolutely. Now let's go and confirm this even more. So here is a book, another book, the 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 Hermit Nation. Now. Only reason why I got this box highlighted because I'll, in the previous videos, I wanted to prove that some of these Koreans or um, people that were in Korea during the Shila dynasty eventually migrated or escaped. And they say now right here, they're not called, um, the, they're not called by the same name. Here they call chosen. So it says after being overthrown, it says after the overthrown of his family, the kingdom by the traitor uh, uh, Kang Jun, the king of the old chosen escaped to the sea and fled southward to the pinnacle so basically where did they go they fled south they fled to southeast asia and escaped to get away from those that were fighting and go into a new land which which island did they go to it doesn't specify but where do they go they sure went to southeast asia now in this case they're talking about the chosen right the old chosen now earlier we gave you a different name kashi that was the name of the israelites or the or the, or the jews that were in Korea. So here we're talking about chosen. So why are we talking about chosen? And earlier we was talking about the, the Kaishi. Well, here you go. This confirms who they are. It says, it says the name uh, conferred by Kaishi, the, uh, the civilizer, upon his new domain and that now in use by the modern Koreans, Chosen and Morning Calm. This ancient kingdom of Chosen, according to the Koreans, comprised of modern Chinese provinces of uh, Shanking, which is now about the size of Ohio, having an area of 4,000 square miles and a population of 8,000 8, souls or 8 million souls. It's entirely outside of the West of the limits of modern Korean. So here, all I'm doing is confirming that the same people that we were talking about early called the Kaishi are also the same people that are recognized as the chosen people or the chosen dynasty or the Josen dynasty. Some of the Koreans, they use the Josen dynasty. If you look it up, it begins with a spells with a J. So it's spelled with a J-O. Instead of calling chosen, it's called Josen dynasty. So the chosen dynasty 
are some p times are actually Israelites. Chosen Dynasty had a lot of Israelites in their community. Why is that important? Because you start to see a pattern here. Ask you why you start seeing patterns when you keep reading these books. Now I know we talk. I know in in um, I want to say Ecclesiastes says those that read many books. But here's the thing: I've had that used against me before. But uh, those same people that use that, yes, you supposed to not choose to read many books. That's gonna that's gonna stir you away from the Bible. However, when you're reading many books to confirm the Bible or to confirm that these people were or the element of Israel was there, it is very helpful to identify the evidence so that people that are in it that are in Asia can know that there are some of them are Israel and if their spirit bear witness, they need to just wake up. So you got to give them evidence. You got to give them patterns. You got to give them connections. Cuz here's this. If those people were chosen, those chosen people was the same people as the Kaishi, which was considered Jewish or Israelites in Korea. Now we got this book here where it's called the Body Snatchers. Why were they still in the bodies? The body snatchers um, descended upon the gravestones of the chosen and digged up the royal remains. Why were they digging up remains of of these of this kingdom for what? What was so fascinating about these bodies? Why were they doing that? Well, it's very obvious that they even read some of these see some of these books and knew some of this information and wanted to confirm themselves. Are these Israelites? Here's how we know. It says, but to conceive the, um, the uh, civilized Christians or Israelites characterizing a steaming to exhume and stealing the carcass and um, moderating bones of the heathen king. Now you say heathen king. Isn't it ironic? They called him a heathen king. I think that's just to mock that king because he probably knew he was an Israelite king. Isn't that interesting? And then at the same time at the bottom here, not going to read the whole page, he also stated that his knowledge was held only by the four Koreans himself and a Jewish peddler. Now, I don't know whether this is a Jewish, a convertible Jew, or a old uh, Israelite that just happened to know where to go and take these people. But you got to find it fascinating that they are up here identifying this person, civilized Christian or Israel, Christian or Israel, and they're talking about the heathen king calling him a civilized Christian or Israel. Just, I mean, just too many blues clues here to not understand that these fools were looking for remains of Israelites, and they knew from studies that they done that these that these people were somewhat descendants and some of them were descendants of Israel. Just saying, pay attention. Now, going back to the topic of the beginning, was Shila Dynasty and Tang Dynasty in China, I mean, in China and as well as in Korea, were they Israelites? We already confirmed absolutely there were Israelites there. So, now that we confirm if those were Israelites that were there, so now let's go to this time period, the 1618, 1618 to 907. Now, I already mentioned this in the last video. This is going, this is saying that this trade, slave trade was already happening. They were trading slaves among each other already. And they were at war with each other already. And it's already confirmed that the Kunglung that were considered Africans or from Africa were black one and they had woolly hair and had black skin so if they were there and everyone is confirming that these people that was in korea and china were israelites i wonder who was being traded so before i was just trying to tell you this had the longest slave trade but a lot of times if you want to meet the prophecies of deuteronomy 28 and we want to say, oh, those that were Israelites were traded into, traded in, um, in on ships and sold to their enemies. Do you not think that during these slave trades that those people were identified early that were in Korea 
and China were not being traded and enslaved during those battles? Would you not think that? If you don't think they were slave, enslaved, then that means you are you are a all nation person that believes that everybody was traded into the slave trade, or you stand by your prophecy and you believe that Israel was sold, according to Deuteronomy 28, from four corners of the earth, and those that were in these countries that were considered Israelites in Korea as well as in China, and then here they were identified as the Kunglung people, and they were sold and in battle to other nations, to each other, had to be Israelites. Had to be. Now, was all of them? Who knows? But I guarantee those that went on those ships that were sold was probably Israel because they meet the prophecy. And we already know the scripture on uh, Moab will not, will, know, Moab will not go into slavery. So, and that's in one of my other videos and I'm, I don't have the scripture in front of my face right now. Now, this is my latest discovery while I'm doing this video. This popped up one day in one of my feeds. You got to look at the picture. I mean, I know the horses are brown, but what's up with the faces? Where did the faces go? So this is some artwork. And this artwork is covering the battle between the Sheila and Tang dynasty. Look at it. They're showing you some artwork. So they're confirming that these were these were no white looking people. And why are they scratching their face out? I mean, Moab and Ammon were dark skinned. What's the shame? What's the problem? Why do they don't want them to know that it was dark? What's you no know, big deal? So the battle between um Baiji restored forces of the allies in Japan against the allies forces of Sheila and the Tang China. The battle took place in uh, Bangma, Bangma River in Korea. The Sheila and Tang forces won a, de uh, a decisive victory um, compelling the young Mito Japan to uh, withdraw completely from Korea affairs and crush the Baiji restoration movement. In 663, Baijing Restoration Forces and the Yimoto Navy convinced in this, uh, con convened in southern Beijing with the intent to re uh, relieve the capital of Beijing Restoration Movement in Chung or Truri, Truyu, which is under siege by the Sheila forces. So this is just a narrative that was just provided. Like I said, it popped up on my feed. It's giving you your time period. It's telling you that in basically 600, 6, 6, um, 6 century and 6, 6, uh, 668, 663, that these guys were fighting with each other. But what I found fascinating really was strictly the artwork that was presented when this popped up because it's obviously that these faces are not, uh, are, have been scraped. You can see the flags and everything, but some reason just the faces are like you just happen to can't see any of the faces. But was Israel here and could some of these people be very much depictions of Israel? Yeah, I kind of showed you that they were there at least. Can I, I mean, I'm not going to say oh, everybody was Israel and this is everybody this is all Israel. No, I'm not saying that. I'm just saying it's obviously a narrative of of putting it in your face. But I mean, hide the truth. That's that, that is definitely Esau's plan. He's always going to put in your face to mock you. But at the same time, he's not going to tell you everything. So I'm helping you get the narrative so that you see that, first of all, some of these people were definitely Israel from Japan, Korea and China during these times. Once again, here is the map that I use so many times. The Mongolian Jews that was persecuted by the Christians during the same time period. Uh, 500 to 609 AD, you know, um, the four synagogues in 621 AD, the great massacre of the Jews, which was in the what? The Tang dynasty, 854 AD. Basically, the, the Jewish communities that were founded in China that was able to speak Hebrew 
in 854 AD. And then over here in the Shila dynasty, it says right now, it doesn't say it now. The only information that I, I received and I found was uh, was basically from 7 to 934 AD after Christ under the sway of the King Shelah, whose descendant rulers until the displacement of the new dynasty, meaning these guys were ruling until they were displaced. So it makes me go wonder, hey, who was in this dynasty and where were they displaced to? I just showed you during the chosen dynasty, which is after the, it's a Shelah, it's a chosen dynasty before the Shelah dynasty. And then later on, there's a second chosen dynasty that comes much later. But there was a chosen dynasty that was confirmed already. I told you, showed you that they were Israel. When the Shelah dynasty started, do you not think that those people that were in a chosen dynasty integrated with the Shelah dynasty? Absolutely. And then this area over here that was in the Mongolia, this name, um, they were actually to this day, they are being persecuted which is a really interesting coincidence. I'm not saying they all Israel. I'm just saying it's just some things that's happened to them. And right now you, you gotta you gotta follow Israel by the curses. If the curses are being fulfilled and they and, they, and their spirit bear witness, you just need to shut up. If the curses are being fulfilled and their spirit bear witness, you might want to shut up and just listen. Uh, it's gonna be complicated. It's gonna be a, a doozy when we, when the time comes because if you start sitting there like oh that's not Israel, you might be you might you might offend one of these little ones and God going to put a moose around your neck and throw you right into the ocean. So just shut up and listen. Let's see what they do. If they keep these commandments, let them keep them. Show this in one of my last videos. There's, this is, a, this is a, a Chinese character contract saying that they were purchasing slaves. It's not a, it's not a um, you know, it's, it is what it is. Artwork. In the museum found in Korea during the Shila dynasty of battles. If you look at the characters, even the painting, these brothers are not exactly, they do not look like the people of Korea today at all. So they didn't hide this one too much, but they, they, they know of these battles. They know of these battles. So just uh just keep spreading the truth out here um there was a people out here there are israel out here and um you know hey maybe some of these people out here will come across this video and repent start keeping these commandments uh find you a a a, a camp or find you a group of uh, men to uh congregate with to fellowship with to learn from so that you will learn how to come back to the laws statutes and commandments of god so that way you are empowered when this time comes when god is returning and crack over the sky because guess what he's only coming from you that believe and if you don't you you know your spirit ain't bearing witness that's all good i get it now because it's like now you don't have to worry about those that don't convert that all israel is not israel or you just a heathen one or the other it's pretty simple and just books coming talking about from macau Previous books that were presented multiple times showing the slave trade. And this is just confirming that a lot of people that came from either Tang Chinese China or from uh, Korea, a lot of slaves were sold from Korea to the Philippines or to the Southeast Asia. And a lot of people were sold from China to the Philippines or Southeast Asia. There's a pattern there. I know some people say China, ch people of China. I watched a video where somebody said, yeah, Chinese are all over in, in, in Thailand and stuff. You know what? It, that, that whole area is a mixed bag. It's a whole mixed bag. So good luck at trying to trying to say all people up in Thailand is Chinese and or, or Jaffet. And good luck saying all people in the Philippines are Jaffet. Because right now, like I said before, you're gonna confend on these little ones and you're gonna be so you're gonna be the ones telling them who they are and who are you to tell them who they are? Who are you? Who are you? You better humble yourself down and realize what you're saying is incorrect. And you want to be confirmed that, hey, just 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 go to the corner and speak. And if that person sit there and listen, let them listen. But you're going here trying to say, you know, using a certain location, you're going to hurt yourself. Too many facts out here for Asia.
just a wonderful video. Well, enjoy.